Hello, my name is Steve Upton, president of Chromix. We develop color software and services to make understanding and managing your color easier. We strive to make people's lives better by product development, color services, consulting and training, and also providing other products we think are best in class. Back in 2000, we released ColorThink, the groundbreaking tool for visualizing color and analyzing ICC profiles, measurements, and images. ColorThink 4 organizes color assets, including profiles that are installed in your system and other assets that are located wherever you store them. They can be filtered by the kind of asset, the color space of it, or even arbitrary text. ColorThink harvests tons of metadata about each asset type, including primary colors, asset type, color space, various size parameters, and even the maximum density value, Dmax. Then you can sort by these values to find the largest gamut profile or the paper with the highest Dmax. Add your external image, profile, or measurement folders, and ColorThink will catalog all of their metadata in the background. Color Assets already tracks recently used items and modifiable folders for favorites, target references, and color references. It also tracks important application storage areas on the same machine for Curve 4 and Curve Plus, Barbieri, i1 Profiler, and ColorLogic software. When ColorThink senses an available color instrument, it also appears in the list of assets sources. The capabilities of ColorThink's Profile Medic are built into the profile evaluation process, so any profiles with any warnings or errors are automatically marked in the display list and can be found using the words error or warn. When ColorThink senses a connected instrument, it's added to the icon bar. If you start measuring directly from the icon bar, the results are dropped into a new worksheet. If you start measuring in the grapher, the results are dropped right into the graph. ColorThink 4 has an exciting way of displaying images in the grapher. Images load in their normal form and quickly animate between the normal display form and the LAB values of the image colors. The embedded profile is easily selected to show in wireframe form, illustrating how the image colors all fit within the gamut of its embedded profile. Another way ColorThink makes included data easier to graph is when ICC profiles contain the measurement data that was used for their calculation. It's easy to check the measurement list and have it included in the graph alongside the profile. This is an effective way of double checking the validity of the profile's measurements and calculation. Another way of using these expandable plot items is to create additional forms of the same gamut for the graph. It's easy to create a wireframe with a translucent surface and color points and other ideas to draw attention to different attributes of the graph.
ColorThink has graphed in the LAB color space for almost 25 years. LAB is an effective space for visualizing color, but it has some flaws and is warped in certain areas like saturated blue, as you can see in this graph of Adobe RGB, where the blues are distended and curved. ColorThink 4 includes new graphing models, including JAB and OKLab, OK which draw on advanced color science to unwarp lab. You can see that JAB changes the shape of Adobe RGB to be much more regular. You can also see how it affects the overall gamut of reflected color. As the colors change from LAB to JAB, the shape of the gamut becomes a lot more regular. This can also help with vector graphs and other visualizations. JAB comes from CCAM. Another effective coordinate space, which unfolds profiles and other data sets, is LCH. Color hue, which normally goes around the color wheel like the hands of a clock, is stretched out into a straight line. ColorThink 4 graphs in LCH allowing you to evaluate your color from a very different perspective. With this view, the relative saturation or chroma of each of the colors is now easily compared because they're viewed across a straight line. Alternate color spaces like JAB and OKLab OK can also be used in this mode so you can see how they affect the saturation to become a lot more regular, like they do in normal LAB view. Up until now, ColorThink is graphed using perspective, where the portion of a gamut that is closer to you appears larger than the portion that is further away. This enhances the three-dimensional feeling of the graph, but causes problems when more analytical viewing is desired. ColorThink 4 now has an orthogonal graphing mode, where the perspective is entirely removed. This creates graphs where any comparison from front to back or top to bottom is unchanged by the relative distance of any of the elements in the graph. It can look a little strange to the eye when you first use orthogonal graphs. But we've had users ask for this capability and we're happy to make it available in ColorThink 4. An important part of graphing in ColorThink has always been the ability to rotate the view and zoom in on different features. But this can be cumbersome at times. ColorThink 4 allows any rotation, shift, and zoom level to be saved as a view. The views can be renamed to anything you want and are available in a list. The first nine views are easily selected by simply typing on the number keys of your keyboard. 1 through 9, to quickly animate between your saved views. The color difference calculations we know as delta E can be difficult to explain. ColorThink 4 can illustrate the idea of delta E as blobs or spheres around colors. The delta E 76 distance of 4 is shown here as a sphere around each central color point. Any color inside that sphere is within 4 delta E of the aim color. Delta E 2000, however, has a significantly different shape. The blobs shown here are also 4 delta E away from the central color, but it's 4 delta E 2000, not 1976. You can change the plotting coordinates from LAB to JAB or other modes to see how it affects these color differencing shapes. Color gamuts normally shown in ColorThink are the maximum gamut the device can produce, as told to us by the profile. This is independent of how the profile itself might produce color if we print it to the device it represents. In addition to the device gamut, ColorThink 4 can show the rendered gamut. In this case, the wireframe is the maximum gamut the device can produce, but the solid surface is the maximum rendered gamut this profile will produce if the source color is in sRGB. The available gamut size depends on the size of the source working space the original colors come from, 
and the selected rendering intent of the conversion. You can see that changing the rendering intent changes the size of the available gamut. But it's also worth noting that the biggest missing pieces in this rendered gamut are caused by the small size of sRGB. If Adobe RGB is used as the source gamut instead, much more of the print device's gamut is available. When Profoto is chosen as the working space, you have access to even more of the device gamut. It's worth noting that at the bottom of the gamut, there are still colors that are unavailable. This is not a malfunction, but is due to the maximum ink limiting that was used in the calculation of the profile. Printing systems do not work well when too much ink lays down, and so profiles limit the total ink that can be used. That's why this particular gamut is missing a bit of the bottom side. When the print profile itself is used as the source space, then what the ISO defines as the available gamut is shown. When you want a more analytical way of comparing two gamuts, ColorThink 4 can use gamut subtraction and addition to create an entirely new kind of graph. When sRGB and a press profile are compared, ColorThink 4 subtracts the portion of the press profile that is left outside of sRGB. This is a very clear illustration of the colors on press that are unavailable if sRGB is your working space. The compare function can reverse the subtraction as well, so the press profile is subtracted from the sRGB gamut. You can also select the shared gamut to be shown in addition to the fully combined gamut. The plot item inspector shows the gamut volumes of each of the two original gamuts, as well as the comparison volume. The gamut comparison index, or GCI, is also calculated in accordance to the ISO standard, showing, in this case, that the press profile is about 49% overlapping with sRGB, and that sRGB is about 202% of the size of the press profile. When graphing overlapping gamuts, there are a few other techniques that can help you to see within one gamut to see how it interacts with another. The slicer tool is one such technique. In ColorThink 4, the slicer can now slice vertically, and you can change the angle at which it slices and also rotate the gamuts through the slicer to gain a new insight into your color. The horizontal slicer from ColorThink 3 is also still available. There are a number of specific purpose tools in ColorThink to help you evaluate and make changes to profiles. The new white point editor is very flexible, where you can enter XYZ, LAB, or correlated color temperature values. You can also drag and drop a list of colors or another ICC profile into the editor and the white point of those will be used to modify this profile's white point. You can see the measure button is also available, and it's a simple click and direct measurement from your color instrument to sample a real-world paper color and change your profile's white point to that color. 